Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday, July 6th, and we continue to have several areas to monitor in the Atlantic, even here in July, uh, getting active fairly early one of which is this upper low north of Puerto Rico retrograding westward towards uh, the Bahamas and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. This is really no longer a threat for development. Um, really, as we've been talking about, the low-level flow underneath of it is too fast for this to really develop a surface circulation, and this will remain a mid- to upper-level feature um, that, as we've expected for the last day or so, now that we've seen the trade wind flow, will not really be a threat um, and will just increase rain chances for Florida, Cuba, and the Bahamas as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico over the next several days. The other system that we're watching is Invest 94L here in the western Gulf of Mexico, evident by all of the thunderstorms in the region. Earlier last night, we did have an area of low pressure try to develop near the southwestern edge of this, which has since weakened, and that's because the convergence maximum is actually displaced to the northeast here, uh, where all the upward motion is. And it looked like we might try to get a new low to form here last night. And we do have a buoy here uh, that is showing pressures decreasing in the region uh, gradually over the last couple of days. However, However, the wind at this buoy is out of the south-southeast, and indeed most of the winds over here under this convection are out of the south-southeast. And if you look at the low-level flow this morning, it's actually turned to easterly coming on shore uh, the Texas coastline. And if you look at this even closer, you can see that the low-level trough is actually right here this morning. It's actually uh, displaced itself all the way north of the convection with the winds coming out of the south and then bending to the east ahead of the trough axis. And uh, now that I'm seeing this, uh, we're seeing this upper low shearing the thunderstorms, and now the surface trough has raced out ahead of those storms. I think this is uh, the chances for this thing is done. Uh, this is no longer a threat for development at all um, before it comes ashore. This is all going to be coming northwest, bringing strong storms into Texas, Louisiana, and northern Mexico. But now that the surface trough has raced out ahead of all of this convective mass, um, this is no longer, I think, a threat for tropical development. It will bring nasty weather to this region as it moves northwest over the next day or two. Now the third region that we have to look at here is a nice little tropical wave that has come out southwest of the Cape Verde Islands and you can see a nice little spin with it here in the mid-levels and the NHC has now highlighted this uh, as orange for medium chance of development over the next 48 hours and uh, this is really not a surprise if you think about it. We've been talking about this large-scale pattern developing for mid-July where these waves are going to have a better environment to start firing off here east of the Caribbean as opposed to inside or north of it. We've had a large sprawling Azores Bermuda High extending east to west, strong trade wind flow coming off Africa to the north. And this thing is so far south here at about 8 to 9 latitude um, that it's uh, benefiting from the cyclonic vorticity generated by being south of the trade wind belt to its north. And that's why you can see it spinning a little bit here. Now the question is, uh, will this guy develop? And uh, I think it'll struggle a little bit before it comes to the Caribbean here. It's going to be moving west-northwest towards the Lesser Antilles here and onward into the northeastern Caribbean. Um, there are a couple of reasons why it should struggle. One is you can see this cloud mass of stratocumulus to its northwest indicating a stable dry layer above the trade wind inversion that may get entrained into the circulation as it tries to come west and I think this may limit some of its thunderstorm growth. Um, however, I think there's an even more fundamental problem with the, this system's development chances and that's that it's embedded um, or will be embedded in a fast trade wind flow. It's actually already moving west at 20 to 25 miles per hour, and this is way too fast uh, for this to try to develop right now. Usually the waves need to slow down to a slower speed before they can acquire a closed circulation with westerly winds on the south side. It really takes a lot for a, a low to close off, and when you have them racing westward this fast, it's just really hard to get that done. Uh, the problem right now um, is not only that it's moving fast in the mid-levels, uh, but you can see it's spinning right now a little bit, um, but it's going to have even more problems spinning once it gains latitude, because right now it's south of the low-level trade wind, trade wind belt, but once it gets here towards the Caribbean, it will be embedded in that belt, and uh, that will cause even more problems for it to close off a circulation. However, uh, once it travels through the Caribbean here and gets farther west, perhaps west of Jamaica at about 75 west, it's going to end up in this area near or southwest of the Bahamas, I believe, in about a week's time. And once it gets in this area, it'll start slowing down in forward speed and get on the southwestern flank of this Bermuda High, and that's when we might have to watch it later down the road. So if you live here in the eastern Caribbean islands, I really wouldn't worry about this system too much. Obviously, you'll be keeping an eye on it because this is the first really vigorous tropical wave coming 
coming your way of the year, um, but I think it will struggle as it comes your direction. Probably not going to be anything really strong uh, once it gets to 60 West. Now here's the GFS Ensemble 500 millibar height forecast. This is the average of days one through five. So during the next five days, you can see the average position of the mid-level ridge off of the Carolinas. And again, when you have this here, you're going to be increasing pressures to, on the southeastern flank. So we're going to have a strengthening ridge here at the surface with high pressure building. This is going to strengthen the trade wind flow. As our tropical waves comes northwest into this flow, um, it's going to have trouble closing off the circulation due to how fast that flow is. However, if we go to six to ten days out, notice uh, the break in the ridge that develops over Florida. By this time, our wave will be in this area of the world, and this is when we might have to start watching it because this trough can start bringing it north into the islands or Florida or wherever in that region, and uh, that's when we may uh, have a more interesting setup for its development chances. And you can see the Canadian actually does develop it uh, by day seven over Florida, and the GFS has an interesting system in the Gulf of Mexico at day nine, which from this wave. So uh, you can see the models are seeing the possibility that this could be trouble down the road and I think this is the first in a line of tropical waves that will be potential troublemakers coming out of the central Atlantic here in the middle part of July as long as the MJO stays in our region of the world and this pattern remains the way uh, that it is setting up right now to be favorable for these waves. Now, here's the setup that we have right now in the upper levels. These are the upper level winds um, shown by the GFS Ensemble. I'm going to go through this loop and show you what's going on. This is uh, the initial time. You can see our upper level low spinning north of Puerto Rico here, which you could see on the satellite right here. That's where it is on this loop and uh, our tropical wave is back here. Now, we have what we call the TUT, which is an acronym for Tropical Upper Tropospheric Trough, laying itself uh, very positively tilted east to west, that is, over the central Atlantic, extending east northeastward here. And notice that its tail is cutting off this low, and when it's oriented like this, it's going to continue cutting off lows like this, and they're going to back west-southwest towards the Gulf of Mexico or northwest Caribbean. And uh, these upper lows are fickle things. They can do several things. What they can do is they can either shred tropical waves that are too close to them, which means the upper level winds destroy the thunderstorms and uh, destroys their chances for development. But if there's a tropical wave a little bit farther back, just out uh, ahead of this upper low, this upper low will back towards the west and the tropical wave will be moving in its wake and that can uh, help ventilate the tropical wave because the upper low is backing away ahead of it, um, taking air out of the column aloft uh, with upper divergence and that can cause the waves to, de to develop or have a better chance of doing so. Um, so when these upper lows are backing away like this, you can see if we move the loop forward, we have one uh, that comes into the Gulf of Mexico, and if we go out farther into about a week's time, you can see a second upper low developing in the tut and getting ready to retrograde. And when we have an active tropical wave pattern developing like we have now with these waves coming out of the central Atlantic, if they're in the right position relative to these upper lows, um, they can have a better chance for developing as these upper lows back away in front of them, and that is a fundamental thing uh, that can cause um, development chances to increase uh, with the with this type of situation. And now that we're getting into the middle to latter part of July, uh, by the time some of these lows start coming across and some of these waves start coming off Africa, 95L is our first one here um, that I think will be the first of a line of these types of systems that we may have to start watching a little bit earlier than usual this year. Usually we have to wait for August to start watching this part of the Atlantic um, but you can see already we have a system in early July that may warrant watching as it gets farther west um, during the next week or so. So we will keep an eye on this pattern. Things are starting to fire up in the Atlantic hurricane season and we may have a couple of areas to watch um, over the next couple of weeks. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.